Okay, hi guys. Welcome to the second part of social networking on the Unit 5 English textbook art. Giving advice, phrases with just, IT terms and also indefinite pronouns are the objectives of our new lesson. As a first step, let's have some reading exercise. I would like you to remember some very important rules when activating on social media platforms. Let's see. Social networks involve a lot of sharing, including photos, videos, links and personal information. Many kids and teens enjoy sharing these things with their friends, but they may actually be sharing information with more people than they realize. For example, a recent study found that 68% of teens have accepted friend requests from strangers and 8% have accepted every friend request they've received. This means their so-called friends may not be people they can trust. So what advice can you give to your peers? Very important, you should not share your information with people you don't know. Tell your peers, your colleagues, your friends not to share their information with people they don't know. Another important rule, and very interesting, to follow the rules on the next slide. As you can see, we have five rules here. The first one, be nice. Mean behavior is not okay. You have to treat others with respect and to never post hurtful or embarrassing messages and ask them to always tell you about any harassing or bullying messages that others post. Rule 2. Think twice before hitting enter. Your post can be used against you. For example, letting the world know that you are off on vacation or posting your home address gives would-be robbers a chance to strike. Teens also should avoid posting specific locations of parties or events, as well as phone numbers. Rule 3. Follow the WWGS rule. What would Grandma say? Do not share anything on social media that you wouldn't want your teachers, classmates, friends, and yes, your grandma to see. Rule number four, use privacy settings. Passwords are there to protect you against things like identity theft. You should never share them with anyone, even a boyfriend, girlfriend or best friend. And the fifth rule, don't friend strangers. If you don't know them, don't friend them. This is a plain, simple and safe rule of thumb. So, let's review. You have to treat others with respect. Never post hurtful or embarrassing messages. You should avoid posting specific locations and phone numbers. Do not share anything that you wouldn't want your peers and yes, your grandma to see. Passwords are there to protect you. You should never share your passwords with anyone. And don't take strangers as your friends. This is very important. Don't friend strangers. And now let's go on with some listening exercise. Unit 5, page 57. Listening. Exercises 3 and 4. Ugh, why isn't this working? Come on. Okay, I'll try again. Oh, stupid machine! What's up, Dad? Oh, it's nothing, Hannah. Don't worry. I'm only trying to... What are you doing? Oh, a friend of mine gave me this game, but I can't make it work. Let me see. Football fast. 
I didn't know you were into gaming, Dad. <laughs> well, I'm not normally, you know that. But they're all talking about this game at the office. I thought I should give it a try too. You of all people. Isn't it you who's told your son about seven million times that he should stop playing those silly games? Ha ha ha. <laughs> Come on, be a good girl. You don't need to tell him, Hannah. Well, I'll think about it. As you know, there are more important things to get on with in life than gaming. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's the problem? Uh, it just won't start. Let me have a look. You haven't created a username and a password, have you? Username? Password? What for? Come on, Dad. Let's not ask any unnecessary questions. The question isn't what for, it's whether you've done it or not. Uh, well, no, I haven't. My friend says it's easy to download and I don't have to do anything. Just start it and that's it. Well... To install it, you need to create a username and a password. That's not exactly a huge job, is it? But let me do it. OK. But don't... Right. That's cooldad42 and the password is I can do it. Oh, dear. You have to wait a bit and then you have to choose your team. OK. Dad, you don't have to press enter 12 times. Once is enough. Oh, that's ridiculous. Hey, what are you doing? You mustn't touch the keyboard during the installation. Oh, stupid game. Well, the game isn't stupid, but you're impatient. Oh, no. What's that? A serious error has occurred while loading football fast. We recommend that you apologise to your daughter. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Oh, okay, so it sounds familiar to you, doesn't it? So let's revise some vocabulary related to IT terms and let's give it a try to key in. To key in your password, what does it mean to key in? To enter, to type. So the answer is, let's see. This one, to type a secret word that gives you access to a computer. So, to key in, to type, password, a secret word. Number two, to install a program. To install a program, to put a program on a computer. To upload a photo. To make an image available on the internet. To upload to make it available, to delete a message, to remove a piece of text so it cannot be seen anymore, to buy an app, to pay for a program for your mobile or tablet, and six, to download a file, to copy information or program from the internet onto your computer hard disk. So. To key in means to enter, to type. Password is a secret word. To install, to put it on your computer. To upload, to make an image available, to upload a photo, to upload a text. To delete is to remove. A message is a piece of text. To buy is to pay for. Application is a program for your mobile or tablet. And download is copy information or program from the net onto your computer hard disk. OK. And now, match the phrases with the definitions, write the numbers from, from 1 to 6. Let's see, you get an error message. What does this mean? This means that information appears on your computer screen telling you about a problem. So, error message means a problem. Number two, an application closes down. What does this mean? An application stops working. Number three, your screen goes blank. 
This means that your computer monitor does not show any information anymore. Goes blank, goes empty, goes white. You close the file without saving it first. Oh no! Let's see, which is that? C. You lose all the changes you've just made. So, never, never forget to save your information. Number 5. A program freezes. It's when the application stops working. It freezes, it stops working. And your hard disk crashes. So is the entire system that saves information on your computer suddenly stops working. So, other IT-related terms are error message, application, goes blank, saving or save, freezes and crashes. Okay, and now let's review some grammar, some grammar with indefinite pronouns, all, some, none, any of them. Let's read the sentences. There were 500 people at the party and some of them, some of them were smashing windows, breaking potted plants. Here are some important tips. None of them can guarantee 100% internet security, but all of them will help you to be safer online. What are the rules for using these pronouns? We use the expressions all, some, none or any of them to refer back to a group of things or people and say more about it. Let's see some examples. There are 32 students in Sarah's class. It's amazing that all of them like music, but none of them listen to jazz. Number two. I like most American TV shows. But some of them are terrible. Number three. Okay, he scored three goals, but none of them were lucky. Four. The cakes that I made were horrible. We couldn't eat any of them, so we threw them all away. Number five. My three brothers like IT, but none of them is as good with computers as my sister. And number six, look at those cameras. Some of them are very cheap, but others are very expensive. And let's see some Hungarian translations. It's amazing that all of them Mindannyian, like music, szeretik a zenét, but none of them, de egyikőjük sem, listen to jazz, hallgat jazz. Sentence 2. Some of them are terrible, de egyes TV műsorok katasztrofálisak. Number 3. But none of them were lucky, de egyikőjük sem volt szerencsés. Number four, we couldn't eat any of them, de nem tudtunk megenni egyet sem. Number five, but none of them, de egyikőjük sem. And number six, some of them, van a melyik, ugye, olcsó, De van a melyik drága. And now let's continue with some phrases with the English adverb just. First of all, let's listen to the lady on the screen. She is going to explain us four ways to use just. Hi, 
I'm Saskia from BBC Learning English. Today I'm going to tell you four ways to use the word just as an adverb. One way we use just is for things happening at this moment. Do you want to go for a coffee? Hang on, I'm just finishing this video. Just can also mean only. This book cost me just one pound. Wow, that was cheap. Just often means exactly. What time is it? It's just four o'clock. Saskia, here's a present for you. Oh, thanks! It's just what I wanted. You can also use just to emphasize other words and expressions. I just love this shirt. So that's four ways to use just. Just in time. Better go for that coffee. So, English adverb just can be used with the following meanings. Only, a short time ago, really. And let's see what are the correct meaning of just in each of the following sentences. She's just come back from Papua New Guinea. Let's see. Only a short time ago or really? Yeah, the correct answer is a short time ago. He wrote his first book when he was just five. Which is the meaning of just? Yes, you're right. <clears throat> it's only. So, he wrote his first book when he was only five. She is 78 and looks just amazing. We can also use here, really. She is 78 and looks really amazing. And now, let's see what does just mean in these sentences. Don't be angry. It's just a joke. Don't be angry. It's only a joke. I've just seen a fantastic film. I saw a fantastic film a short time ago. It's cold today. The weather is just awful. It's cold today. The weather is really awful. No food, thanks. Just a drink. No food, thanks. Only a drink, please. She's just had some bad news. She had some bad news a short time ago. So, how do you use just in English? Just is often used in positive places and questions and comes before the verse. It means just before, a short time ago. Just is a common adverb in English, especially in speaking. Other examples of using just are The phone just rang The play has only just started Mr. George has just called you We have just completed the web project She would have to come just at that moment She have just finished her homework And now, let's turn to another subject, communication through history. As a first step, let's listen to the following audio material. Communication through history. Cave paintings are the oldest pictures. Some of them, for example, the beautiful images in the caves of Altamira in the north of Spain, are almost 30,000 years old. Many of these paintings show animals or hunting scenes. The images do not have written words, but when we look at them, we get an idea of the emotions the people felt when drawing them. They are an early form of communication. Sometime between 4000 and 3000 BC, people in Egypt and Mesopotamia developed the skill of writing. They engraved text on stone tablets first, but it was impossible to carry stones from place to place. The invention of papyrus allowed people to move documents easily. Writing on papyrus made it easier to correct mistakes too. And do you know how they did that? When a scribe, the person who wrote the documents, 
made a mistake. They licked the ink off the papyrus before it got dry and made their corrections. People made the first books from papyrus and from thin animal skins. The Chinese invented paper in 105 AD. The quality of paper soon became very good. The world's oldest known printed book is from China too. It was published on May the 11th, 868 AD. In Europe, people wrote books manually until the middle of the 15th century when Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press in Germany. Since then, almost 140 million books have been published worldwide. For many people, one of life's greatest pleasures is spending a few hours in a bookshop browsing through the books. Books will be around for many years, of course, but some people prefer reading e-books. They are easier to take with you when you travel, and you can download them instantly from the internet. Now you can buy your books whenever you want without having to leave your home. Okay, and now let's practice some vocabulary we newly learned from this uh, communication through history text. Find the words or phrases with the following meaning. Let's see. A large hole underground. What's that? That is a cave. A cave is borlong in Hungarian. Happiness, love and anger. These are emotions. Emotions Erzelmek in Hungarian translation. Cut words into stone. Cut words into stone. To engrave. To engrave in Hungarian is belevésni, bevésni, a kőbe. Paper made from plants. It's papyrus, papyrus. Move the tongue across something. Is to lick off. Lake off in Hungarian, lenyalogatni. A machine to make newspapers, books or magazines. This is a printing press. In Hungarian, nyomdagép. Looking through a book or magazine very quickly without reading everything. This is to browse. To browse in Hungarian, keresni, keresgélni. So the new words are cave, emotions, engrave, papyrus, leg off, printing press, and browse. And now we are getting closer and closer to the end of our Unit 5. I would like you to sum up some of the verbs, the models, and semi models we are using to give advice to our peers. Let's listen to this short film or short video. Dan? What is wrong? Why are you sobbing? I am so frustrated with my English homework. I just do not understand. Maybe I can help. My English is pretty good. What are you studying? That would be great. Thank you. We are learning about the phrases had better and should. The phrase had better means that it is a good idea to do something. Or, something not good may happen. Can you give an example, Karen, please? I still do not quite understand. Of course. Let me think for a moment. Okay. He had better get dressed for school. This means that if he does not get dressed, he will be late. So? I use this phrase, had better, when I mean to say an action is best. Is this right? Yes. Another way to think about it is this, when it is recommended, or advisable, we use the phrase had better. What is the difference between should, and had better? That is a great question, should is used to give an opinion. Had better is used to show that there will be bad consequences if something is not done. Let me see if I understand. I say. You should see this movie, because it is my opinion. And I say, you had better study for your test, because not studying is bad. Correct? Yes. Dan, you got it. Let's practice some more, which is correct. 
You had better come to dinner more often. Or, you should come to dinner more often. I think number two. It is an opinion. I will not get a bad grade, or be late or anything, if I do not go to dinner. Bravo! You are correct. Let's do another one. You had better take out the trash. Or you should take out the trash. Well, I do not think this is an opinion. I mean, we have to get rid of the garbage. So I think number one is correct. I hope this practice session helped you. Yes. I understand now. Had better is used when I want to avoid something bad. Should is used for my opinion. Okay, so should, had better, and we are going to revise or remind ought to as well. Let's see. And now let's see the difference between should, be, had better, or ought to. Ought to is similar to should, but more formal and less common. Should suggests an obligation more moral and binding than ought to. For example, we ought to go home, or we oughtn't to eat sugar, but it's very tasty. So, when drawing a line on the left side, hand side, and on the right hand side, I've put two words, and between these, the other two words that we can use for giving advice. Let's see the examples. You must give up smoking. It's an advice I feel very strongly about. You must kel musai. And then you'd better start exercising. There is a bad outcome if you don't do it. So you'd better ha ha. Then comes ought to or should. You should or ought to eat more healthily. It's only a general advice. In Hungarian, kellene, jó lenne, ha. And the less strong of all is could. You could stop eating sweets. This is only a suggestion. So, these are the words, the models and semi-models we can use for giving advice. I really hope you enjoyed my lesson. Thanks for your attention. See you next time, dear students. Bye.